All right, there we go. Should be good now. So let's go ahead and start this thing back up. Try this again. Uh, let me know if... Um, we'll see if, if you guys can hear me at the end of this. Uh, last live stream I did about 10 minutes ago, the, the audio was a little bit messed up. So uh, bear with me. So I'll, I'll keep it a, a little bit more brief now. But look, you know the vibes. Uh, I won't go into the pleasantries, but... Eagles cracked the bed last night against the Falcons at the end of the game. Really, were playing an excellent game up until that point. Um, despite the t you know the penalties and whatnot, I understand that they had things to clean up. But seeing as it's week two, um, they were actually looking pretty solid compared to other teams like the Cowboys and the 49ers and the Ravens who got caught off guard, just like we did. But um, see, like we had control of that game and we let it go at the end. We were running the ball, giving the rock to Saquon Barkley. He was just doing what he wanted to for the most part. Him and Bijan were pretty much having like a pitcher's duel, the equivalent of a pitcher's duel in baseball. They were going back and forth, and it seemed as though Saquon was going to get the better of um, uh, Bijan. Man, it, the, the names are so similar. And the Falcons, but fast forward is third down and short in the red zone. And you have Saquon Barkley coming out the backfield on a flat route. I'm um, not even a real route. A uh, 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 RB released to the flat. And this time, um, I think uh, Jalen might have give, given him an inaccurate throw at some point in the game before that or to somebody else and didn't lead them properly. But he put this ball on the money. Pressure time, got to have a throw. He puts it right on the money, right to his outside shoulder, but not too far outside. If he's running this way, the ball is right here. He's able to get the ball and, and keep his momentum going without going out of bounds. Ball hits him in the hands. Here's my mouse. Boom, bounces off. Fourth down, clock stops with like a, a minute and 40 left. And now you have Kirk Cousins getting... One more chance that he didn't deserve in that game. And they come down the field and immediately score a touchdown um, with about, I think, 30 seconds left or something like that. 30 or 40 seconds left on the clock. And the Eagles just couldn't come back out and get it done and get a field goal to try to win the game. But it, it came down to, do you blame Saquon Barkley for not catching the ball? Or do you put more of the onus on Kellen Moore for calling a pass play there? Yeah, it's a low risk in general, but what if you drop the ball as, and that happens? If that happens, now instead of being in uh, one of two good scenarios where you either uh, catch the ball and get tackled in balance and you're able to let another 30 or 40 seconds run off the clock before you kick your field goal, or the second scenario, you pick up the first down and the game's over, you can just kneel after that. If you uh, run the ball up the middle or off the side uh, of the tackle for two or three yards, now the game's over because you can run the clock out then. And here's the thing. It, who cares if you, get, if you get stopped? At least you keep the clock running. If it's fourth and one, let the clock run down, take your time out, and kick your field goal. And now you put them in the same scenario, but instead of having over a minute left, now they have something like, 50 something seconds or 40 something seconds left. That's a completely different ball game. So let me know what you guys think. What would you have done in that situation? Would you would you have handed the ball off to Saquon or Kenneth Gainwell or Will Shipley in that scenario or just um, done a QB draw with Jalen Hurts? Maybe out of shotgun just see if you can get the two or three yards or whatever. Go five wide and try to do a QB, QB draw. Or would you go a short pass there like they did? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. That's a short, sweet take for you right there. Um, other than that, you know, the obvious part is um, they need to clean up the defense. Because th there were guys, there were plays over there all night long. They just missed on a lot of them in that game. Um there was two or three where they had a a, uh, a scene route that they had a post route right up the scene that they could have hit. And Kirk Cousins either didn't see it or, you know, um, I, I think one play a guy stopped running, things like that. But they, they're going to have to clean those things up on the back end because you can't have that 
from here moving on out or, or you're going to have big problems on defense. I put a one up if you can hear me. Put a two up if you can't hear me. I'm about to put it in the comments here. I'm going to have, go ahead and read the comment here. I'm, I'm assuming that Ryan can hear me. So comment over here. In my opinion, you were 15 yards out from the field goal. Why go deep? And yes, Barkley should have caught it. Okay, you can hear me. You got a one. Yes, Barkley should have caught it. And I thought they should have run it personally regardless. Not a horrible call. Just running the ball is better. I completely agree. That's my take as well. Um, there, There's a time and a place where... And we can rewind back to the Panthers Super Bowl. I mean, not the Panthers. Um, Seahawks Super Bowl versus the Patriots where you have... You, you're you're at the goal line with Marshawn Lynch, one of the best power backs of all time. You, you can put him top five, somewhere in top five, arguably, right? And then you have Russell Wilson, who at the time was one of the top quarterbacks in the league, a top five quarterback. Still was making great decisions, had, had the arm, had the legs. He was, Russ was cooking at that point in time. And instead of just running the ball up the middle... They opted to go for the slant route, and it turned into an interception. So the same mindset here is like I understand logically, percentage-wise, it's a low percentage risk and a uh, high percentage of reward, especially on a, that that route. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's a give me. But it, look, as with field goals, even if you have a guy like Justin Tucker or Jake Elliott, they miss one every so often, and this was just one of those scenarios where you would be, you would have been better served just running the ball when you had you put so much stock into your offensive line, correct? You have your your line averages about three hundred and twenty five pounds per guy on the line, which is the heaviest line pound for pound in the league. Sometimes you have to make keep football simple and just use brute force to accomplish the goal sometimes. And this was one of those scenarios. You don't it doesn't matter if you don't pick up the first down. The first down is a bonus. You should just be able to have the mindset to go out and say, hey, these are two or three yards. We need them. And look, the ball's gonna go behind Landon Dickerson or the ball's gonna go behind Makai back then. We're running the ball here. You guys know where we're going. Stop us. That's what the Oakland Raiders, and this is a segue into my Raiders, used to do back in the day when um, I became, when I, I, I was um, really uh, starting to come into my own as a Raiders fan. We had we had so many years of suffering, and, and then we finally had John Gruden turn this, this system around. Thanks, Cuz, for the for the one. Um, John Gruden finally came in and turned that franchise around, and and took Rich Gannon who was a journeyman at that time, and he turned him to the NFL MVP in 2002. And Lincoln Kennedy was a right guard for our offensive line. He was, they called him Big Lincoln Kennedy, okay? And he, he was like 6'3", six, 6'4", six, and he weighed about 340. He was a big dude. And he would say there were certain plays, 34 dive is like a classic football play, and um, that type of play, they would he would yell out the play, and some guy, some guys would have like a choo choo train sign or whatever the case may be. So they would know this is the play we're running to this side. You're not stopping it. You have to have that gumption. Um, and I hope that they take that lesson from this this game. Look at look at other teams that are more um, look at the look at the Forty ers Love them or hate them. When it's time to get tough yardage, you know that Debo or Run CMC is getting the ball and they are going right at you. Okay, you have to establish that identity. You you did the the first two weeks with Saquon. Just don't get away from that. All right, memo to Kellen Moore. That's my uh, my monologue. And then I'm gonna shift over, like I said, to the Raiders. Listen, me me and Ryan, like you know what we said in in our video. Okay, we we. I, I did not think the Raiders were going to be competitive in that game. You didn't as well. I mean, there wasn't. I made the segment longer than it really needed to be. I just kind of, you know, threw some filler in there. But good, good grief! They they came out and not, not only did they did they compete, they beat the Ravens. They they shocked these dudes, man. 
They they shot these dudes by a field goal, twenty six to twenty three. All right, Ravens are up nine to six at halftime. We both score a touchdown in the third quarter. I didn't see the game yet. I'm going to go back and do the highlights and probably do a reaction video. The end of the third quarter, the Ravens are up sixteen to thirteen. Somehow we outscore them thirteen to seven in the fourth quarter, and we take the game from them. Take the game from them. Devontae Adams, nine catches, 110 yards, one touchdown. Get the ball to him, okay? Like, very simple things. You know you know where your bread is buttered at, pause, and you go ahead and you feed the playmakers, man. Like, don't make these things complicated. Don't make these things complicated. And we don't really have a run game, but it doesn't mean that we're not going to at least try to go to it. And, you know, I mean, <laughs> look, Zamir White, we talked about this. I, we talked about this. Zamir White, White. You know, bless his soul, nine carries, 24 yards, 2.7 yards a carry. We couldn't do shit on the ground. But D Devontae Adams and Mr. Brock motherfucking Bowers, the rookie out of Georgia, nine catches, 98 yards on nine targets, man. Like, when it when they had to get something done, the mustache, Gardner Minshew, was going to Devontae Adams and Brock Bowers. And our defense, yo, I, I, didn't, I didn't know we had a secondary. I, look, I'm sorry, fellas. Please forgive me for I was talking. I was talking out outside of my neck, but that secondary, from what I heard, the Ravens were not able to do anything uh, through the air. Like they, they really look. I mean, look. You have Zay Flowers, seven, seven catches, 91 yards, a touchdown on 11 targets. Um, you have Mark Andrews, four catches, 51 yards. I mean, that, that's dope, but, like, everything was going to Zay Flowers, and then Derrick Henry, 18 carries, 84 yards, a touchdown. He had a, he had a good game, but we, we kept um, Lamar Jackson corralled. Five carries for 45 yards. That's not nothing to sneeze at, but it's also really, really good if you keep him to those numbers because that dude is something different, man, and we were able to just keep them... Just keep them bottled up just long enough until the clock struck zero. So, listen, man. Um, very, very... Look, his quarterback rating was 81, dude. Garner Minshew's QB rating was uh, 94.7. Uh, 30 for 38. Uh, 276 yards. And a touchdown and, and an interception. But that completion percentage, I like it. Um, whereas Lamar is 21 for 34, eh, uh, 247 yards. He got sacked for 15 yards, two sacks for 15 yards. Yeah, we, we, we got after him, man. And, um, look, Garner Minshew, he got hit five, five times for 43 yards, but the boy, the boy was, um, he's putting, he was making plays where it, where it counted because his QBR was, was lower than Lamar's, but his QB rating was higher. It, it just that just speaks to me that he was able to make a player two when it counted, and um, Lamar wasn't. Man, go figure. Let me know what you guys think of that one, cause I ain't, I didn't call that. I I know I had five different pools for the Eliminator Challenge on ESPN, and four of mine got blown up. My my fifth one is still alive because ironically the Commanders were able to uh, pull out the win when I picked them. But I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people's eliminated brackets got blown to smithereens because a lot of upsets. Uh, you know, the Eagles losing to the uh, the Falcons, the Ravens getting upset, the Cowboys. Dude, yo, the Cowboys, bro. I The Saints had a really good defense, and I picked the Saints to definitely cover the spread, but I might have picked them to beat the Cowboys as well. But I didn't see 44-19, to 19, man. Are they burning the jerseys yet? Is it over? I, actually, let me wrap this up. Let me read one more comment so I can go ahead and get off of this podcast and look at Stephen A. Smith's appearance, his glorious appearance on, on the first take. Because you know, he was he, he was laughing. He was laughing on, on his live stream after they just fell flat on their face for the umpteen time. And you knew that the next day on first day, take was just going to be a glorious day. So um, let me leave, read this last com comment here. Ryan says, I know you're happy as F. Uh, what you think of Lamar's Jackson's play as of late? I think this is a product of 
not playing enough preseason games. We said this with Jalen Hurts. We said this with a couple other quarterbacks. But, you know, this is where the rust shows. This is where it shows. Um, I remember, I think, 2002. I'll leave you off with this story. It was either 2002 or 2003. Andy Reid, I think he sat Donovan and the starters uh, one extra game when it was still four games in the preseason. And we came out and we, we started the game a glorious 0-2. And people could not figure out what the F was wrong with this offense. And then we turned it around. But, like, um, that lack of of readiness and, and being prepared, it shows up, man. The NFL is going to show up. So let me know what you guys think of that. And um, we'll be back. Uh, I think we're going to be back on Friday, me and Ryan, to give the preview for the week three slate. And we'll go actually go through all the teams this time as well. So, um, yeah, catches on that one. And um, till next time, peace.